All right, so this experimental design explainer is coming at experimental design from the angle of kind of people that are used to working with data and hadn't really thought about where that data might have come from. So we're going to start with a real example, in this case from Disney World, where Disney has invested tons of money in order to get people into their parks as efficiently as possible. And in our experiment, they're really trying to hit a goal of someone waiting less than 10 minutes to get into the park. They had done some simulations and showed that this new way of lining up for the parks called cast queuing would decrease wait times by 10%. So they ran an experiment and they found out that cast queuing appears to reduce wait times. On July 1, they implemented cast queuing on all eight gates of entry. And the as is on this plot shows the eight weeks leading up to July 1. Whereas the eight weeks starting in August, when they were doing the cast queuing, they uh, recorded data here. They ran it for a month just to get used to it in between July 1 and August 1. Each data point here is the total amount of time over the eight weeks when the wait time was longer than 10 minutes. A way to represent this down at the bottom is that we have an observation first of the current line waiting approach. And then we have uh, something that we did, the X, which is we implemented cast queuing. And then we recorded the wait times after we had implemented cast queuing. The data would look something like this. At each one of the eight gates, they would have one column with the total wait time for those initial eight weeks when they use the normal line queuing up policies. And then they would have another column of data showing when they had cast queuing in place, what the total wait time was that people were having to wait more than 10 minutes. What kind of test would you run in this case? We have eight experimental units, our eight gates, and we're measuring them twice. If you said paired t-test, you're right on. Uh, and in this case in particular, our dependent variable, of course, is the total wait time. And then our independent variable is, are represented by our two columns here. The as is, pre, the change, and then the post, which is when we had the cast queuing in place. Sounds great. We've reduced wait times. Congratulations. But wait, could something else be causing these reduced wait times? other than cast queuing. I encourage you to pause the video for a second and think of a few other things that might cause this big drop in total wait times that may not be cast queuing. All right, well, now you've had a chance to think about some things on your own. Here's some things that I was thinking about. What if potentially there is some really bad PR for Disney that happened in August or just before August. So wait times could have gone down because there were fewer people there. Or maybe this is just a normal seasonal pattern. where wait times in August are always lower than they are in June. Or how about this? What if there was a big, huge new ride that opened up at a competitor? around July 1st or in that middle of the summer time frame. So people weren't coming to Disney World as much. They were going to this other place. So wait times went down. What if people who didn't like long lines 
stopped coming. To Disney World. Or what if this whole cast queuing approach, the first thing you do when you show up at Disney is you have this character walk over to you and guide you through the line process. You know, what if people walking around in costumes scared away a lot of people who otherwise thought they could avoid the costume characters once they were once they were in the park or maybe even cast queuing confused people so they kind of like did their waiting somewhere else and this actually was taking more time to get in the park it just wasn't in between the places where they were starting the timer and not this is just a partial list of other things that could have been going on that could be causing this drop in total wait time. I bet you probably thought of some others. Well, guess what? We actually were doing another experiment at Disney at the same time. And this has to do with their famous meal plans. Now at Disney, the more people they can get on their Disney dining plan, they get more revenue. And a lot of people though aren't signing up for it because they're worried they're not going to use all their meals and have some left over at the end. So they're rolling out a new feature to reduce this fear called meal exchange. There are different ways where you can use up your money if you have some extra meals left at the end. And here's what they found. It looks like for the number of dining plan days sold per person day, person visit day with the old plan, to the new plan, there was a big increase. Amazing. Well, let's hear a little bit more about the study. What they did is they said, well, let's test this on some of our best folks. Let's go to Disney Rewards members. And when they call up and they're talking about their vacation they're gonna have here, or they're clicking online to talk about the vacation they're gonna have at Disney World, um, we're gonna give some people the new plan and some people were going to give just the old plan that didn't have meal exchange. And um, just how about, you know, just to treat them extra nice, how about we give our higher value Disney Rewards members this new meal exchange plan? And then we measured both of these for the same time period in June and July. The way we could represent this using our notation is we did something, which is that we created a new plan. Um, and we only applied it to some people. So we have two groups here. Each one of our rows in this notation is a different group of people. Um, this group in red on the top right here, these are the people that we offered the new plan to. And uh, the group down here in blue, these are the folks that we uh, did not offer the new plan to. And these are separate groups, so they're represented on different rows. And in this case, we're only looking at what they did after we made this change. And so everything in this notation is to the right of the X showing that we made this change. Well, here's what this data could look like. Um, each row is a person and we have a column uh, right here that says, did we offer them the new plan or not? And then another column that says, here's how many dining plan days we sold. What kind of test, statistical test, would we run here? We have some people that got the new plan and some didn't. And those were different people. They were independent groups. And there are only two levels for them. So we'd run an independent samples t-test where the independent variable is, did you get the new plan or not? And our dependent variable is just how many dining plan days were sold to you. So just like for the cast queuing example, I want you to think, are there other possible causes of this increased enrollment rate that we see in our data other than this new meal exchange? Again, pause for a second. Think, what else might possibly be causing this based on how we designed our experiment? 
All right. So maybe you've thought of some things that could be causing this other than the meal exchange. And I can think of one really big one. And that is, what if our two groups that we're comparing, what if they started out being different? And the difference we see on the graph is just a measure of the differences between our two groups. In this case, that actually could make a lot of sense that our higher value Disney Rewards members What if they just buy more dining plan days anyway? It's actually pretty likely. And that's really our, probably our biggest alternative explanation for what's going on here. Um, there might be some other things that are a little more subtle, such that maybe, um, you know, the only people in this uh, study are rewards members, high and low value. What if just like rewards members were motivated, highly motivated by all things, Disney, that's reasonable. So, and, oh, you know what? Because they have meal exchange, there's something else that the new plan allowed. Um, it allowed you to buy more days. of the dining plan. So because we have this, what we're really seeing here might be, be not the meal exchange part of the new plan, but they're allowed to, be, to purchase more days per your length of stay at, at Disney World. And because we're working with such highly motivated people that are really trying to do it all when they come to Disney, that what we're really seeing is them just being able to purchase more days. It has nothing to do with the meal exchange part of the new dining plan. So we just looked at two experiments, one about reducing wait times, run about increasing enrollment rates in the dining plan. And each of them are pretty weak experiments. You were able to identify alternative hypotheses that could have been causing these changes pretty quickly. So what's causing these experiments to be so weak? We've got a special guest coming to our next video to help us figure that out. Who else? The Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs>